G'day everyone, this is Rising Fun Gaming. Welcome to another Monster Hunter World Play Diary. This of course was from the first round of the beta. And we're continuing our little mini-series here. So this time around we're using the Gunlance and we're trying to kill an Unjanath. Of course we're out in its endemic area, the ancient forest, and um, it's one of those uh, quests where you're tasked to sort of track him down. After fighting him a few times we get a pretty good idea of how to approach him, so I thought I'd include the first part of our quest here. You can see the route that I like to take, and um, definitely doesn't hurt to pick up a few of the uh, environmental cues or clues that he leaves behind. Should have a little, um, yeah, there it is. A little mucus thing there. But anyway, Gunlance is going to be on the menu today. It's one of those weapons that um, I've always had like a passing knowledge on how to use, and it's going to be interesting to see how we fare in this particular run. Um, it's definitely one of those weapons, kind of weapons like it and Charge Blade, like I've always wanted to be pretty good at, but I've never found my feet with them, so. We'll see what sort of dumb fun we can have today. <laughs> Alright, our boy should be up here. There he is. Unjanath, and... Yeah, I didn't think too much of Unjanath. I didn't think he was that interesting of a design when I first see him, saw him announced and that sort of thing, and the little amount of time I got to play against him at the EB Expo, which I attended in October. Didn't think too much of him, but... Now that we had a three-day beta and got to fight him over and over, I've got to say, I really started to change my opinion about this bloke. He's, um, he's got a character about him for sure. And he's got enough sort of, I don't know, interesting parts of the body that just spring out and do stuff. It's a very, very interesting guy. Alright, our guy's not really uh, keen to fight us here, so as he often does, he's going to book it to a different area. I'm not taking us out to the big rocky incline, which is a surprise. And boy, this guy can jump. It's been really cool seeing um, some of the people posting vids on Twitter about uh, just, just underneath in the environment. There's been things like <laughs> people um, just sneaking up next to him and resting with him as they both gaze on the sunset. There's been someone posted a video of him uh, leaping along these stone steps up high, which is really, really cool to see. I just I just love how they've included as much sort of, I guess, monster behavior as possible. Not only monster behavior in um, relation to a hunter aggressing it, um, but um, aggressing, is that even a word? But also just its uh, behavior in the natural habitat. It's really cool to see. Onto the Gunlance now, speak a little bit about it. Um, again, I'm not really one of those people knowledgeable on the weapon, but um, what we can see here, we've got five bullets for this particular one. This would signify that it's a normal Gunlance, normal shelling type. There's traditionally three different types. I don't know if this game's going to introduce any new ones. I don't think it will. If it did, it would have probably uh, made a point of itself to offer said Gunlance in this beta. But anyway, it's, um, as I understand, <laughs> damn Jagras, it's uh, a shelling type that's really good for the full bursts, so we try to do them as much as possible. And speaking of these full bursts, the, the combos that you can um, do to attain that full burst seem to be simplified. It just requires the upward um, striking melee attack, which I think I follow on with a triangle press which goes directly into the slam which um, then requires a circle button press for the uh, full blast there full shelling a lot of poking and reloading and it's very very swift very very enjoyable just like the lance it enjoys um, easier forward movements with the introduction of forward hopping so repositioning or advancing into monsters is made much much nicer in this game uh, thankfully they've taken away the heat gauge mechanic whilst it was a pretty interesting thing it was an experiment in uh, monster hunter generations and 
I'm glad it sort of stayed there because in the end, uh, I think it was it was implemented. I can't say it was implemented poorly, but it was it it wasn't enjoyable. It's one of those things that required micromanagement, and f for the micromanagement you did, it didn't really get you much of a benefit at all. I don't exactly remember the numbers. I think it was something along the line of you you um lock your heat gauge in its hottest part and you get like something in the order of 5% more melee damage with your with your bladed hits so it's like woo, who cares <laughs> but in its place we've got a new gimmick it's the wyvern steak uh, in fact that little that little blue bar looking thing underneath the uh, the magazine I guess you'd call it is it now you can embed this worm wyvern steak into the monster. We whiff it there. But it's um, something that can be done through at least one of the combos that I know of. It's a four hit combo and you can just embed it at the end. I'm sure there's probably quicker ways to do it. Uh, I've probably done it already in this hunt and not really addressed it. We'll uh, see what sort of damage it does next time I get a successful one off. Now the good news is, unlike the wyvern fire, which requires your gun lance to cool down. The Wyvern Stake only requires just a regular reload. Um, and by reload, I mean like a full clip reload uh, animation for it to come back. Even though it's colored in red, um, at first it kind of, you can see me reload it now. Even though it's colored in red, like it first, at first it made me think that it was another thing that cooled down I had to wait for it and I thought, for the damage that it did, it wasn't really worth your time, but um, my fears were, uh, here we go, there we go, there we go, there we go, boom. Yeah, so damage isn't spectacular, it's not horrible. Um, I don't know if I'm striking the best part of the body, in fact, it probably wasn't the best part of the body for it. Well, um, we'll have to see, we'll have to see what sort of uh, damage calculations there are. Because we got those white numbers when we embedded it, I think, in the leg, which wasn't the best. Unfortunately, I couldn't see the numbers for the explosion, so who knows whether the part of the body is going to factor into how effective the explosive portion of it is, or whether that'll be a constant damage thing. Here we go again, embedding it, white numbers, 29. We got an orange number there. Okay, okay that gives us a little bit more data. But for things like Gunlands, things like Charles Blade, um, I always enjoy people commenting on the maths and the utility of those weapons because I uh, don't expect me to know everything. I'm just an enthusiast, not an expert on this game. Anyway, we've got him uh, panting and hurting and limping away already. It's supposed to be the advanced fight. Um, I found he wasn't <laughs> he was he wasn't that tough in the demo was he but I guess for people new to the game here we will put up a pretty good challenge and as he often does he'll escape to where he wants to sleep up high there's a few nefarious things that you can do to him on the way <laughs> depending on his route there's a few different ways he can actually no he's not going to sleep he's going to this area that's right at this point, um, if we uh, knock him around a bit, then he'll go to sleep. And if he's already limping to get to this area, I'm sure he's not far from uh, moving away at this point. Beautiful. So yeah, we've got the Wyvern Stake. We've got some new combos, which are pretty cool. It's awesome to see the actual damage numbers that Wyvern Fire does. Seems to be a consistent uh, triple hit for 50 damage each, at least on the Unjana, at least with this weapon. Um, and our particular hunter set up. And there he goes again. Now, it must be coming up pretty soon, but we do something pretty funny. <laughs> Yeah, watch this. I like this. I like this bit. Flick! <laughs> he usually goes up to that canopy to sleep, but um, if you flash him at the right time, you can get him to fall on his ass, which is really nice. 
Getting a towel for our trouble. It's gonna do a sleep bombing, so I thought, oh well, if he's not going up there to sleep, I might as well just bring the bomb into him. Boom. <laughs> but that's the engine up. Uh, and the gunless was just it was good, brutal, dumb fun for me. Um, I really didn't know too much about what I was doing. I knew the basic combo to get the wyvern stake in. That was the most important thing for me. Wanted to show that off. And um, yeah, I'm delighted to see that you can go into full burst um, pretty much just as fast and, and as easy as you could in Monster Hunter Double Cross. Uh, so for normal gun lancers, I think that's going to be particularly significant. Um, but even to other gun lancers, it will be as well, won't it? So guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been my little fun run of the Gunlance vs. the Anjanath. Had lots of fun doing it and I look forward to learning more about this weapon and the game in the near future. Thanks, thanks so much for watching as always and catch you next time.